Okay, so let's start with the Nokar Mantra. Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Sitanam Om Namo Ayariyanam Om Namo Ujjayanam Namo Lowe Savasahunam Eso Panchanamo Karo Sava Pava Panasanam Mangalalanche Savasin Paramam Hale Mangalam Paramam Hale Mangalam So welcome to our new members. The main thing I want to get across during Dad's class is that is how to apply Jainism to our life outside these walls, right? It's easy to talk about whatever the ideal scenarios when we're in here, it's easy to think about those. But it's very hard to think about Jainism outside when we're busy with our work, busy with our lives. Uh, anybody look at the book without me asking them to? That's how hard it is, right? We have a book and we have, but it's hard enough to even open the book without having a reason to open the book, right? And so that's the whole point is how do we get it into our life? And it benefits our lives, but we may not always know the benefits. So... A couple of classes ago, a couple of weeks ago, we or the last time we talked about meditation, we talked about different types of meditation. And the number one comment I got was, well, let's do them. Why did we just talk about them? Why didn't we do them? So today we're going to do them. Last time we talked about nine. Today we're going to try maybe three or four, depending on how we get to. So, okay. So the first one we're going to do is called breath awareness. This is going to be an easy one. So if you sit, sit up straight, um, close your eyes. And take a deep breath, in through the nose, and out through the mouth, and in through the nose, and out through the mouth. What we want to do is we want to focus on our breath. We want to focus on how it feels to be breathing. And we, if you find yourself distracted by thoughts, you want to, don't beat yourself up about it, but come back to focusing on your breath. And I'll set the timer for five minutes. That way we don't have to worry about looking at the clock. Remember that the present moment is all you have. The past is gone. There's nothing we can do about the past. So I encourage you to forget it. I encourage you to forget your bad memories. I encourage you to forget your good memories. I encourage you to forget everything about your past because there's nothing you can do about it. And the future is not real. No one is promised one more second in this life. We can do things to affect our future in the present. But how many times have those things been for naught? So that's what people mean when they say the present moment is all there is. It's the only thing that's real in your life. And happiness is a choice that you make in the present moment. We've all heard that there's only happiness to be found within us. Nothing external can bring you happiness. But what we don't hear is how to look for that happiness within us. Imagine that you could come back to feeling happy whenever you want it, how would that affect your life? It would be as if you were financially independent and got a bad review at work. It wouldn't bother you too much because if they fire you, who cares? So if you're able to be happy with just yourself, all the negative things you experience in your life would be dulled or would be muted.
because you can always return to this place within yourself where you know that the present is the only moment and the only thing that's real. So when you focus on your breath, try to feel it from the beginning until the very end. And try to feel how each, each breath affects the next breath. If you happen to take one that's short, you'll notice the next one will come sooner. If you happen to take one that's long, you'll notice that the next one can occur whenever you want. If you want to see how distracted you are by thoughts, start counting your breaths and see how many you can get to. When you start out, most people can't even get to five before they lose count because they're so distracted by their thoughts. And whenever you do lose count, don't beat yourself up over it. Just start again at number one. Okay, slowly open your eyes and tell me how you feel. Relaxed. Yeah, you feel relaxed? Yeah, peace. Right. Okay. Thank you. So now, if you could feel like this whenever you wanted, wouldn't that be great? As hard as it is to open up the book outside of this classroom, that's how hard it is to remember that you can feel like this whenever you want, okay? By being mindful and controlling your breath and taking deep breaths, you can start to take control over your mind and over your thoughts rather than letting other people control you, right? And that's how hard it is to, because we don't have somebody to remind us every time that we're slipping, every time we're getting angry, every time we're getting caught up in other people's dramas. We don't have somebody like that. We're the only person we have like that. Um, so any comments or questions? That's called breath awareness and you focus on the breath. And the breath is the one thing you always have. It doesn't have to be the breath. There's nothing special about the breath. Don't make it into more than it is. But it's something you have with you wherever you go. Uh, some people use objects. Some people use different things. So that's called breath awareness. So now let's try something called body scan meditation. So let's do the same thing. Close your eyes. Sit up straight. Okay, so now I want you to, instead of concentrating on your breath, concentrate on how your body feels. Sometimes you're itchy or you need to move around a little bit. Notice how that feels. Sometimes your legs start to hurt from sitting down. And I want you to bring your attention um, to the top of your head. And notice how that's feeling. I want you to try to relax the muscles in your head and your face and bring your attention down to your eyes. And notice that we are never truly relaxed. We have to tell ourselves to relax our muscles to get them to really relax.
Now I want you to bring your awareness to your lips and your jaw and your chin and release any pressure you find there. Notice all the signals that your body is giving you all the time. And I want you to bring your attention to your neck and shoulders and release any tension you have in there. And you can feel your body become heavier and more attached to the floor because your muscles are relaxing. Move your awareness to your chest and your upper back. And feel how your chest or stomach rises and falls as you're breathing. Okay, move your awareness to your stomach. And notice how, whether you're hungry or not hungry, what signals your stomach is sending you. Move your awareness down lower. Feel your body as it sits on the floor. Move your awareness to your legs. Check in with your feet and your toes and listen to the signals that they're telling you. Now I want you to try to bring your awareness throughout your whole body. Instead of focusing it on one place, try to focus on all the signals your body is giving you simultaneously to see if you can do it. Notice when sensations arise and how you feel during them. And remember that they're just signals going to your brain that you can decide to act on or not act on. And the very hardest thing to do is trying not to move when your body is telling you to move. you'll start to notice that, let's say if you have an itch, if you bring it to your awareness and understand what it is, and you let yourself experience that itch without trying to move your body, at first you'll find it easy. But then as you get distracted, it'll start growing in importance in your mind. And as you get more and more distracted, your willpower will start to break out, break down. And then, hopefully, if you can delay it for 30 seconds or 40 seconds, then probably the feeling will become overwhelming and you'll have to do it. Sometimes you'll have to touch your nose, sometimes you'll have to itch your feet, sometimes you'll have to do that. 
see how long you can go without doing that. Because all those things are, are sensations that travel to your brain. And you can decide to act on them or not. Okay, so slowly open your eyes. And tell me how you feel. What was the difference between that one and the first one where we just talked about the breath? What was the difference between that? Anybody notice a difference? Or did anybody think it was the same? Feel more stable. More relaxed. <laughs> you feel more relaxed after the body scan meditation than the focusing on the breath? Okay. Because we were consciously relaxing our muscles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, is that why you feel more relaxed? Okay. Did anybody not feel anything? That's fine, it's hard, right? So meditation is like driving a car, okay? So you can't just learn the steering wheel and just practice the steering wheel, right? You can't just learn the brakes and just practice the brakes, right? You can't just learn the gas and just practice that. You have to try to do everything at once and be bad, be tremendously bad at all of them. But then you try to, you try to, you get better at all of them together. So the difficulty curve is like this. Like it starts out the most difficult it's ever going to be. And then it gets easier and easier and easier. So did anybody not feel anything? Did it not do anything for them? That's fine too. But mostly when we are not used to sitting in the same uh, posture right. for long. Did right? your legs fall asleep? Uh, no, not okay. this time. But, uh -huh. uh, sometimes? Sometimes they, they do. <laughs> Right. Yeah, most of it was like sitting erect like this. Right. That's the because we are not. I think typically people don't sit that erect all the right. time, right? So we we sit we slouch a bit. Yeah. So there's this pain in the back, you know, pain or a sensation in the back that you know, yeah. what's <laughs> Yeah, that pressure is uh, because we are not used to that, and then when right. you focus on your body and and that's when the you start feeling that something is wrong in the back or uh, right. So you, right. There's a lot of pressure or. Yeah, I will tell you that once you start sitting up straight, then slouching feels very uncomfortable for you. So once, once you get used to sitting up straight, you'll want to sit up straight. And every time I meditate, I find myself sitting straighter and straighter as it goes along. Like I can't sit straight enough. That's a kind of a personal thing. I don't think that you'll experience that. But it feels better the straighter I sit. And I find that I can actually sit straighter and straighter as I meditate. But that's very important. Yeah, the, the posture during the meditation is very important. So um, the next one is mantra meditation. So in mantra meditation, we're going to focus on a word or phrase. And for this one, we're going to focus on Om. We're going to say it out loud. Sometimes you can say it silently, but this time we can say it out loud. And your mantra can be anything. Okay, it doesn't have to be home. Okay, so first I want us to start. Um, let's see if it's okay, so we've got the timer, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so sit up straight. Close your eyes. And as you exhale, just say the sound of the letter M. Feel the vibrations in your body. Keep going. Don't focus on your body. Don't focus on your breath, but focus on the sounds you're making.
So now on the exhale, I want you to make the ah sound. Don't worry about doing it in time with anybody else. Just go at your own pace and start and stop whenever you feel like it. Now I want you to focus on making an oo sound. Next, I want you to focus on putting the sounds together, ah, oo, and mm, and try to give each one of them equal weight. get distracted by that thoughts that's fine just focus on the mantra that you're saying uh -huh. Okay, gently open your eyes. How do you feel? I think they're different. I mean, right. They're, they're resonating. Right. You know, mm -hmm. song with me. The sound, mm -hmm. which, you know, created vibration. the resonance. The vibration. The vibration, yeah. That's probably right. right. Did anybody like this type of meditation the best? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. great. Why? Because then I'm focused on the sound more. Uh -huh. It's easier to focus on the sound than the breath? Yeah. Right. Did you find yourself getting less distracted? Yes, because I was, again, trying to do the whole... Right. My bottom and back, the body feels a little warm. 
Because of the vibra vibration? <laughs> okay, so which one was your favorite so far? Which one did the most for you? The sound one. The sound one? Okay. So people like that one. And remember, we talked about during the prayer session, it's easier to do puja, which is physical prayer, than mental prayer, even though people think that mental is easier, because that um, physical movements uh, makes you become less distracted because each time you perform a movement it's an object to refocus on the prayer right whereas if you do a mental prayer it's harder because you get distracted so same thing here when you're performing a meditation with the sound the creation of the sound and the focusing on the sound makes it less easy to get distracted so some people might find it easier because you have more opportunities to refocus because if you're just focusing on your breath and you're lost in your thoughts, why, it may be 10 minutes before you remember that you're not supposed to be thinking about anything. But every time we make an OM sound, well, that's another opportunity to check in and be like, oh, am I thinking about something else? Or am I thinking about what I'm supposed to be thinking about? Yeah, one thing I thought <coughs> first was, uh, 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 felt was like when you do the OM, mm -hmm. then it's just concentrated on your, on your, uh, right. on your face. Okay. Right. Then when you do ah, oh, it was more than your throat and then when more ooh it was right to the stomach great it went all that way <laughs> great perfect so now you know why some people consider this an ideal mantra right mm -hmm. is because it has different properties that other that other mantras don't i don't know all the benefits of the word om but i do know that it has been winnowed down from many mantra over thousands of years that people have decided this was the best one and perhaps that's one of the reasons okay <coughs> so the next one Grab an apple and pass the bag down. I washed these this morning, but I didn't take the sticker off of them. So please take the sticker off. <coughs> okay, we're going to practice <clears throat> eating meditation. And so <clears throat> the things we didn't get to today are going to be walking meditation and other things like that. This is going to be our last one, eating meditation. Um, this is something you can do every day. This is something I'm trying to do every day. When you eat, okay, don't read anything, don't watch your phone, don't watch TV when you eat. And you'll have a number of benefits. First of all, you'll eat less because you're paying attention to what you're eating. If we're eating, if I'm eating, I've done this myself. Do this experiment at home by yourself. Have the same meal that you're used to having and watch something and you'll be hungry at the end. But don't watch anything and pay attention to what you're eating. You'll be less hungry at the end. The same. Same amount of calories, same everything, right? So this is something you can do. Um, uh, if you're, even if you're, you, know, you go to lunch and you're uh, someplace by yourself, you can focus on what you're eating and focus on um, the sensations you have. And remember, don't think about anything else. Try not to be distracted because we're training our minds. And notice every time you become distracted, because eating is very mechanical, um, that you can refocus on the eating. Okay, so take a look at the apple. You always um, eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth, right? Look at it, see how big it is. Look at the bottom, look at the top. Okay, notice the shape. Notice the details. Okay, so now lift the fruit to your nose and close your eyes and smell. Smell it for a couple breaths. What thoughts are coming into your mind as you're smelling it? Can you feel your body getting ready to eat? Is it easier to feel your body getting ready to eat this apple than when you were just looking at it? Probably, right? All right, now I want you to take a bite 
take a bite that's smaller than you normally would take, but here's the hard part. Don't chew it. Just take the bite. Okay, now hold whatever you took the bit off in your mouth without chewing it. How does it feel? There's no rush. We're not in a rush, right? There's no rush to eat this apple. I know there's other things going on today. This was a perfect time to have a meditation class because there's other crazy things going on today and people are rushed. We have plenty of time. We have 15 minutes till we have to get to the general body meeting. Now I want you to chew the apple. Notice how each bite changes with each chew. The first chew was probably very juicy. How many chews until your body has figured out that it's time to swallow? How do you know that? Is your body sending you a signal? And when you swallow, I want you to try to keep track of it as it goes down your throat and into your stomach. And try another bite. Was this bite better or worse than the first bite? Does it matter? And try another bite. And keep on thinking about the things you were thinking about in the first bite. And so you can give yourself different kind of, you know, in um, athletics, a cue is something that you just tell yourself to remind you about a certain set of rules. Keep on taking bites, keep on eating your apples. So like if, for example, you're lifting weights and you notice that the form, your form on a squat, let's say, is wrong. And your cue might be to say, you know, neck up. And that will rem remind you to keep your neck up, to keep your back a certain way, to keep your legs a certain way. That's called a cue that what you're supposed to know when you hear the cue. So one of the cues you might have when you're eating is, well, when you eat the apple, really eat the apple, right? Really notice all, of, and that cue means, well, be mindful when you're eating. Notice all the sensations. Notice why you're getting pleasure or pain. Notice when your body is telling you to swallow and why that is. And if it's an unconscious process or a conscious process. And you can do this for every meal that you have. Most meals were not in conversation with other people. Most meals we do eat by ourselves, unfortunately. So when you eat, notice if you're getting distracted by thoughts about work or thoughts about your family, then you're not really eating. You're not paying attention to what you're eating. Now check in with your stomach. You wouldn't believe that just having this much of apple would have satisfied you. But check to see if you're satisfied. You're probably feeling pretty good now. You're probably thinking, oh, I don't really need the rest of this apple. This is far less than what you would have eaten at a meal. But because you paid attention while you're eating, 
you're more satisfied with your meal. And it's hard, okay? It's hard to pay attention because a meal lasts what? 30 minutes, 15 minutes? You can't meditate that long, but that's what I'm asking you to do is focus on, focus on one thing for that long. It's okay if you did get distracted. But then just come back to it. Like, how did I decide what the next bite would be? You know, did I notice a piece sticking out and I thought, that might be the easiest piece to get. Is that why I decided? Or did somebody else make the decision for me? Okay. And how is each bite, how do I expect each bite to be different from the next bite? And that's when you realize, when you really pay attention to something that you're doing, you'll never be bored. Because you're paying attention to how your brain operates. Okay, if you ever get, I know most of us probably don't get bored. This is something, a lesson for our children mainly, is that who get bored often. If you're really paying attention to your life and what you're doing, you'll never be bored. Because there are so many things. While I'm eating this apple, I see that the sun is shining, that the leaves are going. I see different people. Every now and then I see an ant cross my page. And all those spark reactions in my brain that I pay attention to. And if we can teach our kids that, just like we learn that if we know that there's a happiness within us that we can always go to, and our lives will change because of that, if our kids know that they'll never be bored again, their lives will change. Questions about eating meditation. This one I think is will be the easiest to implement in your life. And this one also I think will give you the most benefits. So now try to stop eating. Are you able to stop eating? Is your body telling you that you want to finish it? Why is your body telling you that? Is it because you're hungry? Is it because you don't like to waste things and that's who you think you are? But remember I told you to let go of the past. See? Let go of everything in your past. Doesn't matter, good or bad. I don't care, you don't care, nobody cares. So if you feel like you have to finish it, why is that? Or if you feel like you don't have to finish it, why is that? Or if you feel like you don't know what to do with this after class, which is what I'm feeling like now, I should have brought something, put our apple cores in, I didn't think about that, I didn't think that far ahead. <clears throat> why is that? And so, if you interrogate yourself, there are innumerable questions you can ask about how your mind works. And the answers are going to surprise you. So tell me what you thought about eating meditation. I, I achieved more because I was focusing on each bite. Right. And I was like, normally, if I'm not paying attention, I'll eat faster. Right. That's so paying attention means you ate slower. And that will mean that the knock-on effect is that you'll eat less, right? Because your stomach will tell your brain you're full before you overeat. Yeah. And I'm, I'm paying attention to what I'm eating so my brain knows that, yeah, this is apple I'm eating. It will, I think, internally may have additional effects of, like, this is the apple I'm eating. It's going to be beneficial to you rather than just watching television something else and eating right you're not paying attention to eating uh-huh you're paying attention to something else so okay so tell me about that so I'll, I'll, I'll ask you well if I can eat and you know do my do read do my let's say I'm at my desk at lunch if I can eat and do this thing at lunch I'm being more productive why is that bad I mean I prefer not to do that okay yeah. <laughs> I love but I'm asking you why is it bad to be doing other things while you're eating. Yeah, I understand you're telling me, well, you can't pay attention to your food, but I feel like I'm getting more things done in my life. So I like that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
how, <coughs> how attentive to the food and how attentive to you are. Right. So why is that bad? It can draw emotions unnecessarily and my fund is that while I'm eating, I want to just, at least during the, the, the meal which I take during work, it should not have any, uh, especially if, for example, there's an email and you feel bad about it and you want mm -hmm. to fire that person or you want to really scold that person because you've done something stupid, why would you want to go in, down that path while you're eating? So mm -hmm. you, you stay away from your desk, come to a place where you do not have access to emails or you're not thinking about, uh, thinking about anything else other than Right. So anybody not like the eating meditation? Anybody didn't get anything out of it? Which is fine. But let's talk about it. You mean apple tasted much different this time. <laughs> than it normally did? Yeah. You, uh, you tasted a difference in the apple, right? It's more sweet and light. Oh, juicy. Yeah, juicy. <laughs> and, and, we, and we were paying attention to when to gulp it. Right. That is also the time when the entire juice is out and then yeah. you're feeling just the skin or uh, the upper part and then, yeah, I think uh, it helps to yeah. pay full attention. Right. Yeah, I, I took a pause like when I was chewing it, I was like, is there still juice left in the <laughs> bite or right. what? And uh, is it, uh, then I was thinking like, uh, normally when I eat, like, do I even pay attention to it or just, just eat, right? Right. When do so at what point do you swallow it? Or right. you know, uh, that, right. that's what uh, I was thinking about. Uh, but again, when you pay attention, you you can think about all the okay, you have chewed enough, and then it's time to go. Right. Rather than just. So that's all I have for you today. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for.